Welcome back, Nerd Squad. We are going to ambitiously attempt to recap every single Easter egg we saw in the limited Disney Plus series WandaVision. Or at least as many as I can possibly fit in this video, because yeah, there was a lot. So without a moment to waste, let's dive right in, starting with episode 1, filmed before a live studio audience. The name for this episode alone is of course a reference to classic sitcoms being filmed in front of a live studio audience, which we later look back on in the episode previously on. Seeing the audience seating in the stands opposing the interior set of Wanda and Vision's home in Westview, implying that the laughs we hear came from, I don't know, some unknown people who were sitting there, like perhaps the real residents of the town themselves. It would've been really cool to actually like flash over to the audience at some point in those moments where we got that reveal, but that didn't happen. The whole premise for this episode seems to be a reference to the classic sitcom Bewitched, with Wanda playing the role of magical witch and wife Samantha. While the story borrows from Bewitched in terms of premise, the style of the show and the dynamic between the main characters, Viz and Wanda, takes inspiration more from another classic sitcom, which we later learned was Wanda's favorite when she was a little girl growing up in Sokovia, The Dick Van Dyke Show. Also no, just to be clear, she didn't grow up in Sokovia like <laughs> back when that show was on the air, but you know, they had all those DVDs. You know what I'm talking about if you've watched it. Wanda refers to Vision's head as being indestructible after one of her flying plates breaks against it when the plate accidentally collides with Vision's noggin. This is a reference to Vision's head being just the opposite of indestructible in Avengers Infinity War after both she and then later Thanos remove the Mind Stone from it, killing Vision. In this episode, Vision notices that today's date has been marked on the calendar with a heart above it. The date is August 23rd. This could be a reference to the total number of movies in the MCU up to the start of the series, which just so happens to be 23 apparently, or more likely is a reference to the Avengers issue 238. Issue 238 features a story where a deactivated Vision becomes reactivated once more, though this isn't the white Vision reactivation story to be clear. And if you're wondering why 238, because 23rd of August, the 8th month. Get it? The image on the calendar with the girl on the couch watching television all alone could be a reference to Wanda's lifelong love of sitcoms and her intense loneliness. Vision is also revealed in episode 1 to be working at Computational Services Incorporated, a very obvious nod to the fact that Vision himself is an advanced computer AI. A magazine that we see Agnes, aka Agatha, reading from in the episode appears to be called Glamorous, which is likely a reference to a type of bewitching magic known as a glamour, often used to make things appear different differently than they really are, like an illusion. Pretty topical considering that Wanda is kind of doing this to the whole town, but on a more intense scale. And also we kind of learned that Agatha has also done this in some ways. Instead of it being a simple glamour in terms of Wanda's magic though, she's actually altering reality. So. That's a pretty intense glamour. The Toastmate 2000 is the product that appears in the advertisement in episode 1. And boy oh boy, is it a whole bunch of easter eggs just rolled into one object. First, it's made by Stark, which is meant to be a reference to Vision being made by Stark as well. But you might also be wondering, what does Vision have to do with the toaster? Other than yeah, they're, they're both machines I guess? He and his synthesoid family are compared to toasters in Tom King's Vision series. The beeping sound that it makes is also a reference to the warhead that ended up being being a dud that almost killed Wanda and her brother Pietro. Or was it a dud? Was it? No, it wasn't, cause magic. The wine being served at dinner with the hearts is named Maison du Mépris, which many believe is a reference to the House of M storyline. Maison du Mépris en français translates to House of Contempt, not House of Misery, which would actually be Maison de Misère. The very prominent featured M on the neck and the lingering shot on the bottle is definitely meant to make us think of House of M. In episode 2, Wanda's surprise pregnancy is a reference to a plot from the comics where the Scarlet Witch herself becomes miraculously pregnant and gives birth to two twin boys as a result of having a bunch of magical energy pass through her. Later on, Agatha Harkness dispels the boys and returns their souls back from whence they came as they are revealed to be fragments belonging to Mephisto, which Wanda kinda just like yoinked. This event eventually leads to Wanda's psychotic break, which causes the House of M storyline. It all comes back to House of M, baby. In episode 3, Now in Color, the store Wentworths is prominently featured, and during even the intro credits, we see Vision and Wanda emerge from the store after a baby prep shopping spree. While we didn't see AIM appear in the show, there was still a chance WandaVision could have been dropping hints at their coming to the MCU in the future with the name of this store. Wentworth could actually be a reference to Superia, aka Deidre Wentworth, who was once the Minister of Education for the villainous organization known as AIM 
or advanced idea mechanics. In episode 4, we interrupt this program, we are introduced to the new director of S.W.O.R.D, Tyler Hayward. While we've speculated a lot about who Hayward could have secretly been working for or allied with, or what his true secret identity may have been, it should also be noted that the name Hayward has been mentioned before in the MCU. Brian Hayward was the name of a character in the show who was tied to Hydra. Brian was turned into a super soldier as part of Project Centipede. Tyler was never mentioned in the show, but it is possible that the two could somehow be related? It's a long shot, but I'm just saying if they mention the name twice, this is the, you know, this is the Marvel Cinematic Universe. There are no coincidences usually. The 80s themed sitcom episode, episode 5, is titled On a Very Special Episode. It has my favorite intro, which is references to family ties, growing pains, and uh, just a little bit of full house in there. We also see Tommy and Billy grow up rapidly in this episode, which is reminiscent of what happened to Andy Keaton from Family Ties, who went from being a baby in one season to spontaneously growing to about five years old without any explanation in the next. Sparky is also introduced in episode 5, a seemingly stray dog that Billy and Tommy found, or that Agatha as Agnes secretly placed for them to find. The name Sparky comes from the Visions family synthesoid dog in Tom King's Vision series, who has a pretty dark backstory and also is shown as meeting an untimely end in the comics as well. But don't worry. Sparky gets better in the comics. In all new Halloween Spooktacular episode 6, at one point Wanda appears shocked somewhat by the word kick ass being exclaimed. Her reaction and the stressed importance of this moment is meant to make it stand out in reference to the more common use of strong language being featured in sitcoms and television moving into the 90s and early 2000s. It also is a reference to the 2010 superhero film Kick Ass, which starred both Evan Peters and the actor of the original and the true Quicksilver in the MCU, Aaron Taylor Johnson. During the opening credits of episode 7 of WandaVision titled Breaking the Fourth Wall, we are treated to a montage of various signage and objects featuring Wanda's name. One is a license plate with a number that is a reference to the birth date of the Marvel legend that was Stan Lee. Stan Lee was born December 28th, 1922 or 12 28 22. In episode 8, our recap of Wanda's life titled previously on, we go back to Wanda's childhood growing up in Sokovia, and that fateful day that she lost her parents. Here we see a reference to Wanda's innate powers, which perhaps have been with her since birth, at least that's what's implied here. While Agatha seems to imply that those abilities actually come from magic and an inherent talent for witchcraft, it is also possible that Wanda could be the key to introducing mutants into the MCU, and this is actually a reference to her former origins in the comics being forgotten slash retconned away. After all, most mutant abilities are triggered either by puberty or by a very traumatic moment in their life, like say the death of their parents followed by an immediate life threatening situation. I'm just saying, I know we didn't really get mutants in WandaVision, but I'm holding to anything that I can. Give me mutants. During the fight between Agatha and Wanda in episode 9, aptly titled the series finale, Wanda at one point hurls a car at Agatha, smashing both her enemy and the car into a house. When she rushes over to look at what has become of Agatha, she only sees her boots peeking out. The rest of Agatha has seemingly vanished. This of course is a reference to the death of the Wicked Witch of the East in The Wizard of Oz. Agent Wu at one point manages to get his hands on a phone and get himself away from director Hayward of S.W.O.R.D. so he can make a call to a friend in Quantico about coming to defuse the situation and apprehend Hayward within the hour. The name of the friend he calls is Cliff. More a long shot easter egg here, but this could be a reference to Cliff Randall, an alien sleeper agent from the comics who might tie into the Secret Invasion series. The end of the series finale ends with a final shot of Scarlet Witch absorbing the knowledge of the Darkhold in what appears to be her astral projection form. The pose she has, and in fact her astral projecting, is reminiscent of Doctor Strange's journey journey in his first self-titled film, where we first learned from the Ancient One what astral projection was and looked like. Obviously that easter egg can be a tie in to Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. The ending credits of all the episodes in themselves are an easter egg referring to the green, red and blue belonging to the days of the old CRT TVs, but in the way things are broken down and rearranged as little pixels or blocks, parallels can also be drawn to the very stylistic 
way, Wanda seems to reshape reality in House of M, with that famous image of her breaking into blocks. You see her face and it's like little blocks, you know what I mean? This is also hinted at as well when she attempts to break her hold on Westview and watches as her children and Vision seem to be disintegrating. Honestly, there are so many Easter eggs, like there's over a hundred by the way, so feel free to share any we may have missed in the comments below because I know that I missed some. I wanted to mention them and I was like I'm running out of time. And let us know what some of your favorites were as well from the series. Also feel free to share if there is anything you are planning on reading or rewatching to follow up on now that WandaVision is done and in preparation for what is yet to come in the MCU. This has been Top 10 Nerd and I'm your host Amanda McKnight. You stay nerdy YouTube.